Through fear and guilt, the rulers of Babylon manipulated their subjects to worship the one true God, who had an insatiable appetite for bloody sacrifice. Later on in Egypt, the Hebrew people who were Egyptians were fabricated to assume the role of the chosen people and were used and abused, as they used and abused other nations, to establish this chosen people propaganda. The predecessors of ancient Babylon, Egypt, and the Israelite nation was the Kabbalistic knowledge of the elite Kabbal mindset, which knew firsthand how to manipulate matter one molecule at a time. The Paradise State had never experienced the illusion disconnecting them from the all-knowing state of wisdom. This elite mindset knew this, and being not at all concerned with the matter of lying, conjured forth the systems needed to perpetuate this deception. The magicians who received this knowledge and appeared as wise men would eventually, many centuries later, become known as the Hebrews. These Hebrews were the Egyptians of centuries past and ultimately became known as the Israelites. These future Israelites formed a portion of humanity who would be used and manipulated and abused beyond belief by their leader rulers. In turn, the Hebrew nation was used to shed blood and destruction, all in the name of God. Being that the masses of humanity have been imprisoned in a total hypnotic trance state, they would still continue to worship the God of the Jews in spite of this massive bloodletting. Even today, many Jewish people still practice Kabbalism as part of their faith. However, it's not only in Judaism that one sees the Kabbalistic principles applied. Kabbalism is sun, god or light worship. Christianity is also Kabbalism as is Islam and every form of religion in the world, including atheism. Different names, rituals and holy days have been applied, but the worship of a supreme being, the light, is the ultimate dogma. That supreme being is the light bringer, Luciferian Egregore, the conjuring group creator, who in turn are the Kabbalistic group of thinking entities. Archaeologist experts have found no evidence of Hebrew Jews ever living as slaves in Egypt or of their exodus out of Egypt. The Old Testament carefully covered links between the Pharaoh's characters and the Bible characters. They mixed historical facts with myths and legends. The Abraham character was based on Amenemhet, the Egyptian Pharaoh. The Hebrews were not a race of people as once thought, they were a symmetric and Asiatic class of foreign workers who migrated into Egypt from neighboring lands to find work as craftsmen and builders. As their population exceeded over hundreds of years, they contributed to Egyptian technology, worship Egyptian gods and intermarry into Egyptian nobility. They worshipped Egyptian gods and violated Hebrew laws to keep the secret even from their fellow Hebrews. They secretly ruled Egypt. So, why did the Hebrew authors of the Bible mix facts with fairy tale myths in the Bible? So they can hide the fact that the ancient Egyptians and Hebrews shared the same royal bloodlines. The Egyptian people forced the Hebrew Hexos kings out of Egypt the only way the Hebrews could still rule Egypt was to hide their Hebrew identity from the Egyptian people by changing their names to Egyptian names and intermarrying into royalty. By marrying into these Egyptian bloodlines, they gained the Kabbalistic knowledge. The descendants of these Hebrew bloodlines through the millennium have left oceans of blood through wars, sacrifice, murder and their trademark of lying cheating and stealing. They have colonized and enslaved the world till this very day, as we will see later. Here, we see a modern CEO receiving the silver papal olive branch 
as a sign of success and professional matriculation. The olive does not, however, represent peace. It is a Judaic symbol representing the Davids or Atonists, the original Pharaonic Judites. Even the Pope is a Judite, even though he belongs to the Roman Catholic religion, whilst the Queen of England is also a Judite, even though she belongs to the Protestant religion. The Oppersames know just how the game is played. Remember, these bloodlines have many masks. They wear the masks of Jews, Islamic, and many other masks to fill their agenda. They control Zionism, the Vatican, and everything you could possibly think of. They own it or manipulate it in some way or another. Are you still wondering who controls the US and the world to this very day? Check the eagle on the American $1 note. Notice the 13 olive leaves and 13 red berries. Before Agnaton's time, the word Levi referred to the Irish letter L or Lewis, which corresponded with the Rowan tree. The hand of Agnaton holding an olive sprig with leaves and berries. His Atonis so dutifully continued to employ the few symbols he favored, such as the sun, beams of light, lion, and olive branch, etc. The emblem for the tribe of Judah displays olive leaves and berries. The lion signifies the Judites, Atonis. The emblem of the United Nations bears an uncanny resemblance to that of the tribe of Judah. Each sprig of olive or laurel contains 13 leaves. Oak leaves, acorns and olive sprigs can be found on military regalia the world over. The Rothschild coat of arms. The arrows and eagle appear on the American one dollar note, while the lion, representing British oligarchic control and symbolizing the Judites, Levites, or Atonis, appears on innumerable national flags and royal coats of arms. Symbolism explains the mysteries that historians and experts just can't seem to fathom. Initiated artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, Sandro Botticelli and Nicolas Poussin incorporated Kabbalistic hermetic leitmotifs in their canvases. In Poussin's painting entitled Grapes from the Promised Land, we see the ladder and tree Millions of people view paintings of this kind unaware of the secret information incorporated into the designs. Stairway to Heaven There's a lot more information here than meets the eye. Freemasonry, the oldest secret society in the world, has its roots in the Old World over 6,000 years BC. Ancient Freemasonry signs and symbols were incorporated and recognized by everyone worldwide. When they greeted each other, they would acknowledge the greeting through signs and handshakes. High-level insiders know quite well there is no significant difference between Judaism and Masonry. Masonic aprons with olive and laurel sprigs. The Merovingians who established the Vatican Cistercian Order and Knights Templar date back to the so-called Dragon Court or Brotherhood of the Snake that had its headquarters in Egypt but which originated in pre-Diluvian times. As the centuries slid by, Kabbalism was employed by many other groups. Eventually it was passed into the hands of the Christian Roman Catholic Church and the Society of Jesuits. The remaining books of the Old Testament are actually books of alchemy or ancient chemistry. Further, 
veiled in allegories. The very famous Song of Solomon is actually the alchemical process. The books of the New Testament, except for the book of Revelations, which was a call for the downfall of the Roman Empire written around 170 AD, are books of astrology and astronomy and stellar movements also hidden in allegory. If one joins an organization such as the Freemasons and goes high enough up the chain, he or she will learn how to read the allegories and see what information the ancients were hiding in those allegories, and also see how accurate that information is compared alongside modern-day chemistry and astronomy. Alchemy comes in two primary flavors that address the two primary cosmos we inhabit, the microcosms and the macrocosms, dealing with the two realms we perceive. Exoteric realm is where the alchemist would attempt to turn lead into gold. Esoteric realm is more about turning spiritual lead into spiritual gold. The Knights Templar, or the Christian Crusaders, also laid claim to this knowledge around 1000 AD, when the Templar Knight found the translations and actual meanings hidden within the Bible, buried in the ruins of the Temple of Solomon, they blackmailed the Roman Christian Church with that information and became quite rich and powerful. One of the other Kabbalah secrets is that matter can be transferred molecule by molecule by incantation and thought, and that the structure of reality is really a holographic illusion. The Baphomet goat head was used by the Knights Templar. Over seven centuries later, the legends of the Templars and the mystery of Baphomet is alive more than ever before. Hundreds of secret societies and religious orders claim descent from the Knights Templar in some form or another. Almost all hermetic groups claim to be perpetuating the Templar tradition. Eliphas Levi's main thesis was that all forms of occultism and mysticism held a common secret doctrine. Ritual magic, he said, utilized the existence of what he called the astral light, defined as a natural and divine agent, at once corporeal and spiritual, a universal plastic mediator, a common receptacle for vibrations of movement and images of form, a fluid and a force which may be called, in a sense at least, the imagination of nature. It was this agent which reflected the magician's will expressed during a ritual and actualized it into existence. He illustrated this concept with a hieroglyphic form, which he called a Baphomet, claiming this was the spiritual principle secretly revered by the Templars. Levi used this picture as the frontispiece for a number of his books. Levi's image of Baphomet is virtually synonymous in the common mind of the uninitiated with the image of Satan enthroned in hell. That's only because the most modern depictions of the devil are based on the card of the same name in the popular Rider Waite tarot deck, and this card is itself based on Levi's depiction of Baphomet. Levi repeatedly stated that Baphomet was not the same as the devil, however. Rather, it was a symbol of a transcendental power beyond good and evil, man and beast. The Baphomet goat head represents wisdom through thought. Most Gnostics, the Ophites, believed that the physical universe was a prison created by a demon named Ialdaboth. Both comes from Bythos or Bihat and means chaos or the deep. It is connected to our modern words like bath and baptize. Chaos was called the abyss or the primeval waters and was analogous to the first matter that the alchemists believed creation came from, from the king of the jinn or demons who is worshipped as the true god by the Yazidi sect in Iraq till this very day. The word Azazel 
is reminiscent of the word azoth. This was a personification of the alchemical Alcahest, also called the universal agent, the philosopher's stone, the quintessence or the fifth element. This was the original substance from which they said the whole universe was formed. The alchemists believed that it was to be found within the prima materia or first matter. It was believed that this substance could be used to transform any one thing into another. The Knights Templar invented the banking and checking system in the late Middle Ages. Instead of trading with gold and silver coins, they mainly traded in coded chits, paper that represented a promise to pay and the right for the recipient to collect their payment in gold or silver coin at the bank branch of their choice. Later, this developed into fractional reserve lending. The Jewish-Christian connection then enjoyed the creation of Islam in the early 7th century AD. This brought together the three major players, collectively known as the children of Abraham, or the children of human sacrifice, who form approximately half of the world's population. The worship of Amen Are was hidden within royal power circles and secret societies to this very day. Christians and Muslims unknowingly end their praise in Amen, which is Amen, R-A, sun worshipping. When you read the words holy prophets, know that this refers to whole prophets, monetary prophets. This is simply more reference to the muddy tree. This is how the Luciferian egregore group thinks. Sound and shape association is everything. These genetics were passed along from generation to generation. If this interbreeding remains constant, so it is with the Luciferian-minded thinkers. They have this Kabbalism knowledge of how to control energy and how to manipulate light. In other words, they know how to manifest deceit. The art of lying and deception, sexual deprivation, mind control of the masses through religion, political and intellectual institutions, subliminal programming of sigils, language and the number system, how to manipulate matter one molecule at a time, hiding mathematical equations in architectures and art like anti-gravity, how to keep the population in a constant state of panic and terror, the secrets from ancient mystery schools, coded messages, divide and rule, magic, alchemy, incantations, and the control of thought from entities and much other occult knowledge which is used to this very day. Israel has no historic claim on her mythical Davidic kingdom, and the cold, hard science of archaeology proves it. Gospel, go spell, means go spell. In other words, go, put the word in the spell, or the trance state through religion and science, the rebirth of thinking. How well we know what a profitable superstition this fable of Christ has been for us. A quote from Pope Leo X, 1513 to 1529 the truth of the liars. Realize that it is the Luciferian master hypnotist just screwing with our minds, playing the good God and the wicked devil and playing it very mercilessly. Solomon's temple was said to be built by demonic entities and was the temple for sexual orgies, satanic sacrifices of women, children and animals, the worship of idols. The biblical Ark of the Covenant was stored inside Solomon's temple with four gold rings built into the four sides representing the four corners of the globe where the biblical Abraham disciples would rule. Throughout the ages on every part of the globe, satanic sacrifices dawned on every culture, some in public 
whilst others hidden from view. This practice exists till this very day, right under our very noses. The people involved are royalists, politicians, judges, lawyers, dentists, and from every walk of life are involved. Millions of children go missing every year, sold into slavery, prostitution, and satanic sacrifice. The earth is one big slaughterhouse. Animals not only are they slaughtered for food, but sacrificed for barbaric ancient ritual in the name of their satanic gods. Other animals killed for hunting and for gruesome experiments. In China, dogs are used for their fur while still alive. In Australia alone, more than 50,000 animals are experimented on and tested on in one single year. Animals are culled worldwide. Just recently, 100,000 monkeys were killed in Malaysia to make room for farming. In Islam, over 100 million animals, mainly sheep and lambs, are slaughtered for good luck worldwide in only two days of Eid of Ramadan. In the New Testament, 22,000 sheep and cattle were slaughtered. Thousands of animals have been blown up, poisoned, or given anthrax in secret military experiments at Port and Down last year alone. Famine, disease, drought, natural, and not so natural disasters are also sacrifices. In Niger alone, 2,500 children under the age of five have died from starvation and malnutrition in the last month alone. Starvation and malnutrition deaths are over 15 million a year. To satisfy the world's sanitation and food requirements would cost only 13 billion dollars. That is what the people of the United States and the European Union spend on perfume each year. World wars and conflicts are on one level, satanic ritual sacrifices. Child sacrifice was introduced to the agenda practiced worldwide till this very day. There are many levels of child sacrifices, but the real reason, known only to a few, is that sacrifice must be performed to keep this fake 3D illusion intact. Just as in ancient Egypt and Babylon, they must commit human sacrifice continually to generate the fear, which generates the energy. On another level is that the ritual is the representation of the newborn, being born into a slave world since the fall of man from the Garden of Eden, which is really a fall after the cataclysm. The other level is mind control of the masses through religion and other dubious ways of persuasion, as we shall see. The sacrifice of one's own child, particularly that of the firstborn, was always seen as one of the highest sacraments in the ancient world. Going back to the oldest cults in history, people sacrificed their own children to the gods. Priests, kings, and even the gods themselves offered up the fruit of their wombs. In reward for this, they believed they would receive blessings from heaven, prosperity, fertility, health, and protection from evil. In the Old Testament, God condemns child sacrifice, but only because it is part of the customs of rival cults, because the sacrifices are not done unto him. Burnt offerings to Baal Moloch, in which babies were placed inside of an oven made in the shape of the bull-horned god of the Phoenicians. Certainly the concept that drinking blood or bathing in it will bring eternal youth is nothing new. 
This is, of course, at the heart of the vampire myth. Elizabeth Bathory, the famous blood countess of 16th century Hungary, was said to have killed up to 600 young virgin girls for the purpose of bathing in their blood, which purportedly gave her skin an eternally youthful appearance. Romans reported watching hundreds of mothers throwing their newborn into the Tiber every morning. So many infants were killed that even though mothers had eight or more babies, the populations of antiquity regularly decreased. Mass burials of thousands of sacrificed infants have been discovered in early states from Germany to France to Carthage, where archaeologists found one cemetery filled with over 20,000 urns containing bones of children sacrificed by their parents who would kill them if the gods would grant the parents a favor, like if their shipment of goods were to arrive safely. As Quintilian said, to put one's own children to death is at times the noblest of deeds. Sacrifices are always necessary whenever independence and success is achieved and the avenging killer mother goddess must be placated. Even when people built new buildings or bridges, little children were usually sealed in them alive as foundation sacrifices to ward off the avenging maternal spirits who resent the hubris of building the structure. Those existing ancient and beautiful temples and cathedrals, which are called by many the House of God, which are spread all around the planet, are in reality and in truth temples and cathedrals erected with innocent human blood. The Kostnis is a small Christian chapel decorated with human bones. Not even ancient Greeks could dispense with human sacrifices. Early reports of burning and eating of children in human sacrifices were followed in classical Athens by the practice of keeping victims called pharmakoi, who were ritually stoned to death as scapegoats for the sins of others. Franklin Roosevelt. In 1998, the Times of London reported that the bones of six children were discovered underneath the floorboards of Franklin's old home near Trafalgar Square, where he lived when he was ambassador to England. It was during this time that his participation in the Hellfire Club occurred, amongst other horrible things, the drinking of blood of unbaptized infants. The skeleton showed that the bodies had been cut up and some of the skulls had holes drilled into them. Blood drinking today is rampant through Satanists, royalists, presidents and people in power. Al Gore was caught with vials of blood at the airport. Consuming human flesh, particularly that of babies or fetuses, for the purpose of obtaining health and vigor is still disturbingly common in the world. It is part of traditional medicine, as practiced in some parts of China, where there is an underground market for human fetuses and deceased infants. There is also an endless supply available due to the country's stringent one-child policy. In Southern Africa, human body parts are referred to as muti and are traded at high value on the black market for use in witch doctor ceremonies. In antiquity, since women were an alien and inferior species, sex with wives was a rare duty, engaged in mainly to provide offspring, and men were addicted to raping young children, both boys and girls, in order to prove their virility and dominance. Their rapes were almost always agreed to by their parents, who often pimped their children and slaves for a price rented them out to neighbors as servants to be raped, sold their virgin daughters for marriage for 50 pieces of silver, gave their children to pedagogues for sexual use, made their children serve at their banquets so they could be raped after dinner, went to war in order to rape the children of enemies and handed over their children to the brothels, bathhouses and temples that could be found in any city of antiquity. Physicians advocated the rape of children 
as a way to overcome depression and as a cure for venereal disease. Parents taught their children that the teacher's thrusting his penis between his thighs when his anus is the fee which the pupil pays for good teaching. Parents in early ancient states proudly sacrificed their children to avenging deities. As I have documented in detail, child sacrifice was the foundation of all great religions. Maccabee's book, The Sacred Executioner, portrays the entire history. Millions of children go missing every year, being kept in cages for use as human sacrifice and future CIA sex slaves. They are also used in child labor camps. Today in Japan, child pornography is not illegal, and in India and Southeast Asia, young teens are readily available in bars for sex at around 15 American dollars. Satanism, mind control. One level of Satanism is nothing more than a form of mind control that affects the participants involved and their victims in certain ways depending on what level of mind control is needed. There are many levels. High level participants that are involved in black covert operations involving scientists, engineers, pilots, etc. are all introduced to Satanism and are shown horrific rituals involving sacrifices in which they must participate in. Those present also share blood. There are sacrifices going on and torture the programs of satanic worship and satanic sacrifice and the love of the bloodthirsty killing of innocents. Once reaching that level, they take a vow to Lucifer. This is to establish not only a form of mind control, but to establish the participant as being a member of a satanic cult. They now have them by the nutsack, so to speak. Who can they tell? And who would believe them? This form of Satanism mind control is incorporated in every field of mind control and is an epidemic running wild. It runs rampant in every part of the entertainment industry. The very well-connected families of centi-millionaires who are very involved in diplomatic and intelligence operations are all involved in Satanism. The Illuminati Cabal family themselves are subjected to massive mind control and Satanism. The elite are also all compartmentalized and even more so than the average man. Each one of these elite minds only gets a bit of what it is that they need to know to move the agenda along. They themselves are under immense mind control since birth. Check out Fritz Springmeier, deeper insights into the Illuminati formula, not for the light-hearted. Anton LaVey's Satanism is more of a philosophical side of Satanism, which is like a soft pawn designed for the would-be sheeple Satanist. That's why your average Satanist will argue about what is said here. Some so-called secret societies are mind control institutions in disguise run by the CIA. There are several recruitment mechanisms which are all based on the carrot and stick approach. The bait which is commonly used to lure new members is sex, money, bribery, drugs, pornography and some form of sycophantic purloining process. Salo, the 120 days of Sodom. The film focuses on four wealthy, corrupted, fascist libertines after the fall of Benito Mussolini's Italy in July 1943. And that was the cover story, but what it really was in depth is something else. The movie is about mind control victims, programmers, slave handlers, and even shows a black mass. The 1975 Italian film, written and directed by Pier Paolo Pasolini, 
was Pasolini's last film. He was murdered shortly before Salo was released. Eyes Wide Shut is another movie that show what the elite get up to, which shows mind control sex slaves, sex magic, rituals and sacrifice. Of course, the movie shown is soft porn in comparison to the real rituals. Bohemian Grove. When Alex Jones was invited, <clears throat> sorry, I meant infiltrated the Bohemian Grove and broke the story of the rituals, which only happened to be a mock sacrifice, even though in reality, the private club gets their sacrifice victims through the CIA and the MK Ultra Mind Control Program, MK standing for Mind Control. Many thousands of children are simply bred for sale to this program. Children are used for every possible perversion by the leaders of the world before they're ritually sacrificed. The ritual is called... The participants are casting aside all of their worldly concerns. Through the sacrifice of the youth of others, they can relax now. As the ritual states, Midsummer sets us free. Just like those who came before us, we have been sold into slavery by our ancestors, who were simultaneously plied with promises of blessings and threatened with curses until they agreed to offer their children up for sacrifice. The one statue that Mr. Jones failed to film was the one most obvious as equally powerful meaning, like the Molek statue was the one statue with the finger over the lips. Shh reminding everyone to be very quiet or else a scandal will come out about all those homosexual activities that are filmed in the Grove and other places like the White House brothels and those billionaire ship cruisers that reside just outside international waters where there is no law, where all your fantasies are catered for. This is how presidents and all these gopher puppet elite in positions of power are kept at bay. These are all nothing but mafia tactics. There is also the $500 million club and the billion dollar club. These clubs are set up so they can lure these new super rich into the tentacles of the corrupt mafia octopus. Mumbo Jumbo! Mumbo Jumbo! Mumbo Jumbo! Look around you, all of you. What do you see? A bunch of buffoons in fancy dress. I was an FBI agent for 27 and a half years. At the time of my retirement, I was the senior special agent in charge of the FBI Los Angeles Division. I have been qualified in the courts as an expert on cults and satanic ritual abuse. I have information from various sources uh, that uh, judges, law enforcement, prosecutors, attorneys, doctors, some many, many prominent individuals, including actors, actresses, professional football and baseball players are involved in these type activities. Please remember, most of the people who are at the Pentagon, in the White House, in the CIA and secret societies know nothing about these ultra-secret agendas. They are cogs in a machine and are also victims of ignorance. Most are good people caught in a machine not of their making and about which they have very little knowledge. There are also many sincere people who go into, for instance, politics to make a difference in the world in a positive way. These people don't get very far and are demoted. If by any chance they slip through, they are quickly analyzed and they do a profile on you and see that you were to the right of Mussolini in terms of wanting to be aggressively violent, destructive and of course corruptible. You couldn't get past that level. You have to be wired to be extremely violent and hate-filled if not, they will end their involvement with you, in which case you will be swept aside. This 
is the people running our world right now. That's why the world is in the shape it's in. One such case of some slipping through the ranks was in Australia, involving Mark Latham, the opposition leader who challenged Zionist cabal-controlled Prime Minister John Howard for the top spot. Latham, suddenly he fell very ill and weak in the middle of the campaign and had to back down. Claims of high-tech weaponry were used against Mark Latham, who was a high-profile figure who wanted to do good for Australia. High-tech weaponry that can make a person very ill and can give someone a heart attack by just pointing the weapon against them is now at the elite's disposal. This weapon does exist and is well documented. These high-tech weaponries work because on one level the body is light and it works like an electrical motor. They know how to disrupt the electrical flow. Cancer is still an old favorite they use for the undesirables like President Chavez who also wanted to do good for his people. So if you think Hugo Chavez died a natural death, I'm afraid that you are terminally naive. The Venezuelan president himself, before he died, wondered aloud whether the US government or the banksters who own it gave him and his other leading Latin American enemies with cancer. American Indian movement leader Vernon Belcourt on his deathbed said, the CIA finally got me. Australia and New Zealand are now in the hands of Zionists. It is also the test case for the New World Order. The motto for New Zealand is, she'll be right. The motto for Australia, she'll be right, mate. That is why Australia and New Zealand were chosen as the test case.